Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Welcome to Mike's Retro Tech and the Retro Loft. Um, today we have a Dell AT102W PS2 keyboard. Nice and clicky. I had one of these ages ago and foolishly sold it. Got rid of it, it was in black. So now I've managed to find this one in cream. Um, nice and cheap. Sold as used but untested. Um, didn't say it wasn't working. Now I've plugged it into my retro PC and it does work but it doesn't work with my USB to PS2 converter. So I've had to buy a new one of those which should come next week. But anyway, it's, um, it's looking pretty good. It's um, AT102W as you can see. Is there a manufacturing date on that? I don't know, I can't see from up here but if you can see on here somewhere there might be a manufacturing date. Um, it's not too bad. It um, needs a bit of a clean. But what it does need is, as you can see, the keys are all yellow. So with it being a glorious summer day today in the UK, I'm going to get my keycap remover. And I'm going to remove all of these keycaps and give them some retro bright. And then I'm going to clean up the top of this case with some... Um, alcohol i think uh, this this case won't go any lighter but these will definitely go white in the sun so i'll take the key caps off and then i'll show you put them in the bag with the retro brightening peroxide and then we'll stick them in the garden in the sun for a couple of hours and see what the result is okay so got my key remover got my three packets of b blonde 40 volume of peroxide, got a bag of tie handle food bags to put the peroxide in, and I've got my gloves because it's going to hurt my hand otherwise. So I'll take them, I'll take the tops off, and then stick them in the bag, and we'll take them outside and we'll get them retrobited. So I've just taken a couple of keys off, and as you can see, where are we? There. So there's the yellow and there's the natural colour of the keys. So hopefully they'll come back to that colour. Um, they all look a bit mingy and they all look a bit dirty. I could probably just clean them off with some soapy water. But I think Retro Brighton is the way forward. And then I'll be able to use it as a nice new keyboard. One thing to remember is when you're taking this key off, which is the zero on the keypad and the enter key and probably the plus, underneath it, it has this little metal bracket. And if you pull too hard, what you can do is you can pull these little white slots out. So it might be best to take this plastic case off first. Otherwise, these little plastic bits might get broken and pop out. I mean, luckily, if they do pop out, you should be able to pop them back in again properly in the same order. But just be aware of that. I forgot and it popped out in my hand. So that needs to be kept to one side. And um, it fits in there underneath the key so yeah so just be careful with those bigger keys and the return key and things like that and the space bar definitely and as you can see as well this keyboard has black micro switches now I'm not sure they ch I don't think they cherry keys I just think they're normal micro switches but it sounds clickety clackety anyway, which is what I wanted it for. So that's good. Right, so all the key tops are off. The um, the switches feel nice and responsive. There's no stuck down keys due to excessive use and finger grease and things like that. This is good. I clean the outside of the case with some WD-40 very gingerly just to clean off some of the most, you know, the, the grottier markings. Don't want to do too much to this case because the plastic may be quite brittle because it is 26 years old. Um, it has a Windows 95 key there, which means it came out for the Windows 95 machines. Anyway, I've put all these keys on the top row in one bag. All these keys on that side of the keyboard in another bag. And then the rest of the keyboard in a third bag, just so that I don't overwhelm with the retro brightening stuff. So as you can see, there's the three bags of grotty keys. So I'm now going to put one of those in each bag. Massage it around a bit and then take it out into the garden and put it in full sun. 
The only my only concern is that these freezer bags I've just brought are blue, and the previous ones I had were white, so I don't know whether the blue is going to affect anything. But we'll try. I mean, they were like two pound for eighty, so it's neither in there. Um, but I'll I'll show you these outside soon, and then we'll see the result through the magic of YouTube and see how we've got on. Seven hours later. Alrighty, so these bags now are back in the house. They've had six hours. Oh, more than that. They've had. Yeah, seven hours outside in the sun. So, although it's the UK sun, it's, um, yeah, still sunny. So, I'm going to poke the sink down. Open the bags. And let the water flow. Trying not to get any on my hands, but it's still painful. Always wear gloves because it does hurt. Okay, so what have we got? That's out of there. One empty bag. Two empty bags. Three. Empty bags. Ha 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 ha. And as you can see. They look a lot, if I can go this way, they look a lot better. They're more white. Still a bit yellow on the top. Probably need another do tomorrow morning. So I will let these dry in the air. And I'll revisit these in the morning. Some look really good though. drying on the worktop ready for running the same process tomorrow some are nice and white some are still a bit yellow see you can see around the sides there it's uh, yeah still a bit yellow so we need to address those but other than that that's quite successful